This video is a really short and simple video to tell the difference between an intra and extra axial brain lesion. The reason why this is important is it helps to narrow down your diagnosis. Extra axial lesions originate from the covering around the brain, whereas intra axial lesions occur actually in the brain, so they are intraparenchymal. In contrast to an intraaxial lesion, an extraaxial lesion will usually have a broad base along the dura, and it will look something like this. It can also have a dural tail seen here. Adjacent to the lesion, you may also see some bone hyperostosis. This basically means that the adjacent bone will be expanded. So if the lesion looked like this, then the bone adjacent to it here will appear expanded. You may also see a CSF cleft. If the lesion is here and the brain is here, you will see CSF between the brain and the lesion and this is what is known as the CSF cleft. The fourth sign to look for in deciding whether a lesion is intraaxial or extraaxial is to look at the grey-white matter junction. In an extraaxial lesion, this will usually be preserved. The most common extraaxial lesion you're going to come across is a meningioma. Specifically, meningiomas can be partially calcified or fully calcified, and when contrast is administered, they avidly enhance. They also usually have a dural tail. In contrast, with an intraaxial lesion, the grey white matter junction is usually destroyed. For instance, if we draw a brain here, usually you can see the grey matter peripherally and the white matter centrally and you can see a distinction between the two, however in an intraaxial lesion this junction is usually destroyed. Examples of intraaxial lesions we all know, there's plenty of them including malignancy which can be primary or secondary, infections such as abscesses, demyelinations such as tumour factor MS and even infarcts. We will do another video discussing the difference between cytotoxic and vasogenic edema. So let's take a look at this first case. As we're scrolling through the brain, we can see that there's a large space occupying lesion in the region of the left frontal lobe. The first thing to say is that it has a rather broad dural base. Secondly, you can see some CSF between the lesion and the brain. Thirdly, better seen on the other slices, you can see that there is preservation of the grey-white matter junction. Let's take a look at the bony windows. You can also see that the adjacent bone is hypertrophied and expanded, in keeping with bone hyperostosis. So overall, this lesion, which is partially calcified, has a broad dural base, has a CSF cleft, and has bony hyperostosis. This is in keeping with a large meningioma. It's probably been there for a while, but as we saw on the brain images, there is some brain edema, and this will require a referral to the neurosurgical team. So looking at this second case, as we scroll through the brain, you can see that there's an abnormality in the right cerebral hemisphere. There's extensive vasogenic edema, which is affecting the right temporal lobe and extending into the right frontoparietal areas. There's a degree of mass effect with slight effacement of the right lateral ventricle. And also there are some slightly hyperdense foci, such as the one seen here, which are suspicious for intraparenchymal hemorrhage. Overall, the appearances of this are very different to the extraaxial lesion we saw before. The grey-white matter junction is destroyed, and so this is an intraaxial lesion. Given the aggressive appearances, the most likely differential for this is a prim primary brain malignancy. It may also represent a secondary deposit if the patient had a relevant clinical history. So hopefully this video has just given you some basic ideas as to how to tell the difference between an extraaxial and an intraaxial brain lesion.